Hey folks, thanks for coming and checking out this week's Flint Nappin Friday. We're going to knock out uh, this nice little archaic style atlatl point out of a really nasty, clunky looking piece of raw Buffalo River chert. So we're actually going to flip back and forth between some different toolage, which is something I don't normally do. But we're going to end up turning out a pretty nice hunting point, and it's probably going to be in the kit that I'm going to end up taking hunting next week. And Maybe we'll get uh, get lucky and this will find its way into uh, a hog's thoracic cavity. So anyway, follow along. Let's make this point. And then uh, maybe if we're lucky, we get out and go do some hunting with it later. Hey folks, Ryan Gill here with Hunt Primitive, where we entertain, educate, and inspire. And this is our new series, Flint Napping Friday, where we're working hard to get you where you want to be in your own flint napping journey we're going to be breaking different rocks into different styles of points and blades and using different tools for those different jobs. And so there's gonna be something for everybody and something different in every single episode. The very last thing I wanna mention before we start on the project is if this is your first time with the channel or your first time flint napping, before you watch this video, I highly recommend the flint napping for beginners video, which I'll link down in the description. All right, folks, thanks for joining me for uh, this Flint Napping Friday. We're gonna, hopefully it works out all right. We're gonna work a, a piece of rock, one that we call a clunky. So we sell these boxes of clunkies, right? And it's, they're not like the perfect flake. So like if somebody orders like normal rock, they get like really nice flakes that are easy to work for the most part. And then we also sell, um, obviously at much of a discount because you, you have all of this rock that's they're not perfect flakes but there's absolutely still points and blades and stuff in them and sometimes they're even half this size but I always look at them and say could I reduce this and make a point and if the answer is yes we put it in a pile for our clunkies and so people will buy those whole big boxes of them and I always say that they're not really for beginners they're for people that love to just flit nap and work through a process but you can see that they're um, they're just tough pieces and I remember I used to get stuff like this in a box of rock when I was a kid or you know really just learning to flint nap and I was like there's no way that you can make anything out of this and stuff like this I used to go out and throw in a flower bed all the time and I'm lucky I'm glad I didn't just completely throw it away but I would found myself as I got better and better and better I would go out to the flower bed and I would start collecting this kind of stuff and then I would go back and and use it now I look at these pieces going I actually enjoy these sometimes more than I do the really easy flakes because they're more of a fun process to work through so that being said they're okay for beginners if beginners just want to beat on some rock but they're not good for beginners if you're trying to really learn how to flint nap because you got a lot of problems you got to work through on this. This is for like intermediate kind of guys or folks that really have no problem drastically reducing a piece and they love the challenge of it. And that's what those are really for. But anyway, that's what we're going to we're going to work through and it takes a lot of big uh percussion removal to kind of flatten them out and if you've watched me talk about these before looks like it's going to be a pretty pretty piece of rock but um and if you see me f swatting around there's a dang mosquito in the shop and you're probably going to stop and see me clapping and trying to catch this thing because i'm tired of getting bit with it and i just can't can't quite get him um but anyway you'll hear me talk about these clunkies if you watch the other video that i've done on it that what we're doing is look at the whole thing as a stack of paper right so if you watch the flint napping for beginners video which i'm sure you probably have by now and if it's your first time to the channel and you haven't go look that video up with we'll try to link that in every one of these videos really important video but imagine this as a as a as a big stack of paper a ream of paper and you can't expect to remove stuff like down here at this level if you haven't removed the stuff at the top. So I'm always looking for the high points to say, how do I remove the highest points first? So obviously there's too many people would look at this and unfortunately would think they would hit it here 
to remove all of this and that's not how that's going to work right because if you're trying to set up a platform you're trying to remove it all at once that's where you're going to fail so what you have to do is set up platforms on this side of the center line right so if you're going to draw that center line so there's a nice little recap on that video draw a center line if that's at Rima paper we'll now find the center line of the rock this is like right at the center line is this little tip and if you try to hit it here it's not going to go all the way across center it's going to stop especially because there's a little divot on this side so now you have one problem that's got a little cupping right here it's at center line and it's got a dish on this side and beginner flint nappers don't typically all they see is one problem at a time it's it's playing chess right beginner chess players only see one move at a time but a guy that plays chess competitively or really strategically is looking ahead a few moves and then somebody that you know really really is a, a big chess master is going to see multiple moves ahead so i can look at this just from experience of flint napping going i already see a problem here with this dip this platform is not ideal and even if i do run it it's going to run into this so i'm planning moves all the way ahead going okay how do i how do I find this piece? Maybe this is where I'm going to start because I've got to take this ridge out so I can get rid of this dip so I can build a platform to drive across. So you're thinking moves and moves and moves ahead. That's why the clunkies are for people that love to like solve puzzles, right? Because if you just start beating on this thing, you're just going to have a one big clunky rock at the end of it. So. I still look at it going, I still don't want to hit it here. Now my goal, this is the best part, right? Planning ahead. My goal is to take this piece out, right? But I can't hit it here because it's got this dip in the back and it's going to stop and hinge right there. And this platform sucks because it's dipped in. So even if I hit it here, it's still not going to get enough bite to remove this. And if I hit it here to remove that, the angle is just a little too steep so even instead of hitting this i'm going to flip it over now i'm going to remove off of this edge to develop this platform to remove this then once this is sufficiently removed then it'll expose this so i can drive a flake across here which will help get rid of this divot by getting rid of this divot it'll give me a platform to work through this spot so let's do that now as in real time the way that i explained it right and we'll see how it works out so what we're going to do the idea is to remove this but we're going to look at this spot here and we're going to remove a couple here and that also created a better rate one more that created a better platform to remove this ridge. That's not my normal abrader and I felt it immediately. I don't know where my other one is. I guess it doesn't matter. You just get used to using the same tools over and over. Must have dropped it or set it down somewhere. Anyway, now we're going to take this ridge out. See how I took that ridge? Okay, I didn't get all of it. I don't care about right here right now. I'm trying to flatten this out to work this piece over. I can take one or two more out of that. Come on. Or six or eight, whatever. There, we got it. That was a nice purchase. You could hear that ring. You always know when it's a good hit. Okay, that's good. Okay, so we, we knock that out. Now, okay, that opened that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to walk it down to get rid of this divot. Okay, so we're still on that, on that game. That was pretty good. Now, we're going to take this platform. Remember the first initial one that I said it's got this problem? Now we're going to run this one. And this is a weird angle, so it's like a 90, what I would call one of those really steep angles. We're going to flop it up, and we're knocking that ridge. 
so it creates a better platform. In fact, we got one more in there, a little one. No, we don't. Wants to fight me. I'm going to batter that edge. I do want to take one more right there. So I'll braid that off. I don't want to take it, I guess, because it don't want to go. So I'm not going to force it. I'll braid it off again. So there's the divot that we were talking about. I think we're fine. I'm going to hit it up here first. And then walk it down. Alright, so there's the divot. Remember, this is what I said. Our number one goal was to take this piece out right here. We got rid of the divot. We cleaned all this up. I would recommend if <clears throat> I knew it all kind of happened fast. Luckily, we didn't eat up a ton of time. If you really want to see that strategy where I call what I'm doing, go back and watch that last whole sequence, honestly, three or four times, and then you'll understand the strategy to get to where we're at now. Now, my goal is to, this dang mosquito, ha, oh, I almost got him. I should have committed to when I swatted in my face and I didn't. Um, I want to remove this, but this is still a little bit funky right there, so I'm going to make a little bit better platform that's good now we're gonna braid that really well and I think we've got a really nice platform now you know what I'm gonna do I love the evolution of tools this this is a, a newer bopper same thing this is an older one you can see how I've really beat it to death and it's got almost too sharp of a point on it. I hate it, but there's something about, I need that really tight angle. That's why it's good to have like three and four different tools in circulation at one time because they give you some different angles. So like having one kit's great. As these tools change over a period of time, you'll find that a lot of people, they'll, you know, customers can come back and they buy multiple tools and it's because they start to wear out but you also don't really get get rid of your old ones because look at the two different edges that we're looking at here you know what i mean this one's been used heavily and then this one is relatively new this one will turn into this one at some point but this one still has a lot of value so and in this situation is where i believe we've got a good one all right i'm gonna try to capture that as much as i can <clears throat> All right, so we've only got a multitude of pieces there, right? Hold that up. So that was the ridge that I said originally we wanted to take care of. I ran that all the way down that ridge. One hit from that one little platform. Now we're going to do that again. We'll take just a really quick break to mention so when people ask where to get this stuff at, you can get rock and tools and combo kits, anything that you'd need for flint napping at huntprimitive.com which we'll put a link down in the description and it doesn't matter if you get from us or you get from somewhere else that doesn't really matter what the really important thing is is that you're putting your hands on some tools and on some rock and you're getting to work making some stuff and having a ton of fun because we still have more platforms but we don't just we're not just going to hit it wildly we're going to braid it and then we're going to look at it say so how do we set up the next platform well there's another there's another little nipple right here, but see that's what we want is the platform. I need a little smaller poker so I can show you. I'm going to use the micro flaker for that. So here's, that's actually the platform we want, but we can't hit it because this little guy right there is in the way. So I'm going to pop that little guy out of there and then batter that and we got rid of that. So now it exposed this platform. Now this, the problem is like collateral damage. When we hit this, we're probably going to hit this one. This one's got an undercut to a, a little dish. And what's what I'm worried is going to happen is if we just hit that really hard, instead of traveling the flake, it's going to go to about here. It's going to hit this dish and it's going to stop and it's going to leave us a big step fracture right there. If I had to take a guess. So... To mitigate that, I'm going to take a couple little hits, almost intentionally making a little 
a small, uh, well, that's a lie. I was going to say I was going to make a little step fracture as I didn't expect to hit it that cleanly, but I actually cleaned it off to where I got rid of almost all of that little step fracture. So now all we have is one clean big platform. So again, I'm abrading away from the direction that I want to hit. And I'm not, I'm still not 100% sure why I do that. I just do. And it seems to work. So I guess at the microscopic level, it probably erases everything that I'm trying to hit because I'm going that direction. So it's probably even grinding stuff up higher on the platform. Okay, now I'm not going to just show up and hit this thing right in the middle because I already it's already a little concaved. And all it's going to do is follow the same pattern. So I'm going to move off to the side and I want to give a couple of relief flakes. Just like we would do if you were going to do like fluting on a clovis. You don't go for your big flake without doing reliefs. And if you remember, go all the way back to the beginning, I had problems with the divot and that this was undercut the way it was. I had to relief that so I could drive this one all the way up. So because of that, I'm going to back up and I can't go to here because there's a divot, but I'm going to come over to about here and it's going to be a very significant hit. Okay, so we drove that one all the way to here and that's now left us a ridge right there. So we'll braid that back and now we're going to hit that platform. Okay. So we got that thinned out. Like I said, this side, I'm not that worried about it. It was fun that this one went all the way up, but I'm not worried about it because we're going to clean it up coming this way too. And now we're going to take this one, but we're not going to take this one yet. And I'm going to tell you why. Kind of because it didn't finish out, but also look at the dip over here on this side. So this is again where it comes down to playing chess. If we turned it over and we hit this, it's going to hit this dip and this dip and it's going to come in and it's going to stop and it's probably okay because we could catch it up from the other side but why not plan ahead clean this up and start catching it up to here that way when we run it maybe we can run it the full length like we did the first one right so again think ahead it's strategy in flint napping so this is kind of doing what we want it to do let's go ahead and flip this entire point over entire not even it's not even a point it's nothing right now but a dang clunky rock i want to remove some more off this side because i want to remove here right so i want to get this removed down so i can drive flakes but when we look at it as the sheet of paper our platform is on this side it's to remove flakes off this side and that's great well we can't remove flakes on this side so it doesn't matter how well I grind this platform if I set it up to hit here the angle is going to be so steep all it's going to do is actually make this platform worse so I have to remove flakes on this side I want to swap back over to the other bopper okay nice little flake there and actually I'm going to start turning my angles up because see how that's kind of like a 90 degree right there I want to start working it around to where I want to bevel. See how it's already starting to round off a little bit? I want to kind of bevel this over so I have better platforms. Perfect. Getting close. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm beveling it over to create platforms to run this direction, right? So again, it's not like when you're bifacing, you would be working like this. Well, I'm raising a platform to remove this way, right? Well, I'm removing flakes this way to actually create a platform to remove this way. So you're creating a platform to run, run perpendicular to the flakes you're currently removing. See, this is the flit map and I love because it's real planning ahead strategy. This is a lot of fun to me to do this. So. See how I'm rounding this over? I'm just beveling this. I just, and then when it's time to take those flakes, oh, they're gonna be great. But in the meantime, what I've also done is I've created this beautiful platform to start thinning now this way. 
and I'm kind of torn because they all look like fun and I don't know which one to hit first but I'm gonna do these ones big thinning flake big thinning flake getting excited I need to slow down and braid that get this nice peak here we can knocked right across that now don't get greedy and start you see how it dips in right there okay see how it dips in you can't get greedy and hit it there because if you if you do that it's going to stop it's going to step fracture now there's a nice high spot and that's where you get excited and you're hitting and hitting think about that if we want to take this piece out what do we have to do we have to remove this and then this and basically get rid of this dip and then we can run that flake across. You can't even come from this side because it's such a knife edge and it's got a con concavity right there. We won't be able to do it. So the only way to do it is to either A, snip this, which we may later, or reduce this, take this ridge out, and then expose to where this is no longer a dip, but it's actually a platform. Then we can run it. Okay, so let's think about that and we'll come back and look at that later, right? So we've got this. I don't want to run any big flakes. Now all I'm doing is I'm continuing to raise the platform to thin this other side. Getting close now. Alright, so I want to steep angle that a couple hits. Alright, I need some nappers oil real quick. And then let's think about where I want to hit. If I come right in, the whole thing, you can see there's a slight swooping. And if I hit it here, it's going to come to here and stop. Or here and stop. That may not be bad because remember when we first started, I said, well, if I hit it here, it's going to come here and stop. I think we're at one of those situations where we got to pick the one that's the better choice, which is the one we just recently developed. I don't think it's going to run. I can't imagine we're going to run it. I think it's going to stop right in the center where it's got this little valley and this little valley. It's going to stop and then hinge heavy. And then we have to hope we could develop that to remove that. So let's. Well, it went further than I thought, so that's good news. But I didn't try to get it all at once either. All right, now we've got a little bit, I gotta take a little one out first. Because now the platform's getting kind of convex and you can't drive a flake into a convex uh, center. And it's still a little bit convex, but we're gonna grab up high. And I'm telling you, it's. I would be very surprised if it doesn't step fracture heavily right there. But I think we just have to do it. There's a little step. Whoop! Oh, it actually traveled through. It still stepped right there. Which is fine. We expected it to happen. But we're going to be able to come from the other side and get it. So now I'm going to kind of run this one. It's going to feather out into that divot which did and it step fractured so I'm going to take a little bit of angle off of it alright now pretty much knew it was going to step fracture which is fine because we're going to come from this angle and I'm actually I'm going to show you this angle before I do it and the reason is, is it's very steep and if I hit it right there it's going to come and it's it may erase this, but I'm thinking it's it's so steep, I don't think I can actually pass the hinge. And I want to undercut the hinge a little bit. So to do that, I want to take a couple choppy flakes off of the platform. Because the platform's almost too, it's like overdeveloped. So I want to blunt that platform just, just a little. All right, I feel a little bit better about that. And now we're not going to try to take it all in one shot. We're going to take this ridge, which is probably going to hopefully meet to that step fracture. Wasn't a good enough bite. 
There it is. Met to the step fracture. Took that out. Now don't just keep wailing on it. Instead of hitting it here, because it's all it's going to do is accentuate this dip that we just keep diving into. I'm going to slide up the point and I'm going to take one more off of this one, but I'm not going to angle it here. I'm going to angle it off to the side. Switch boppers again. Okay, it kind of stepped on us again right there, which is not a problem. Kind of expect that. I think this side's good. Now, it's like you got to know when to say, okay, we solved enough of a problem. Now we can flip back to this side because we got rid of all this nonsense. Now we can actually start reducing this to guard. Remember that dip we talked about that's here? We're going to start working on that. But now that all this high stuff is gone, it developed all of this platform to start running flakes across. There. I mean, remember what this thing looked like when we started with it? That big clunky, and now we're starting to get down to... Uh, into uh, an actual bifacial looking piece. It's not looking so clunky anymore, is it? Right? So, if you're not to the, if you get stuff that you think is a little bit too clunky in a box, you know, say like you order a box, and I don't really put clunkies in normal napping kits, but once in a while I put one in there, it's a challenging piece. I mean, I typically, let's say not once in a while, typically I take one challenging piece when somebody orders a box and I put it in there, and I'm hoping that they start problem solving it, even though they probably just bash it to death. But most people I know when they go get into like a box of rocks, because this is how I did it. I'd open up a box of rocks and the very best pieces. I was like, oh, I'm not ready to work these yet. And then I set them aside and I start beating up the crappy ones first, hoping that I'll get better. And that's actually the opposite way you should be doing it. Um, when you open up a box of rocks, your thin little flakes that you think are, well, the, I got to get better before I can use these. Those are actually the ones you should be learning on first and then start getting into these ones. But I assume people, when they get one, that's like a little tougher like this. They get it in their box. I, you know, if they order a box of clunkies, they get clunkies. But if they order like a starter kit or a deluxe kit or whatever from our website, they'll get something like this. And I assume that most people go through and they just beat it up, but it's like they're learning the percussion process. And that's very important too. But the reality is the stuff you should be learning on are those really nice little flakes to where it's building up a little bit of confidence. And then once you've got the concept of removing, like this is super easy. You'd knock this little tip off. And I I've set this up here. We'll probably use this for a flit nap and Friday at some point, just because I, I it's such a, a great piece to teach off of great platforms really easy piece to get points out of that's going to give you the confidence to be able to tackle these these much tougher pieces that you get but it's all part of a process right all right so all that being said i delayed long enough let's go ahead and hit this rock i was just hoping i could explain some of that to you but just because you think a piece may not be good now you may be surprised that in a year or two you go back and you're like oh man i actually prefer Fur to work that piece and I didn't get that until I was uh, much older come on this is a tough one because I may snap the whole thing in half okay I ran right over that ridge remember that's that little dip I was like let's not hit that well I just hit it because I've worked down to it but I can't I can't hit the very center I got to work up a little higher there's a flake oh I should have abraded that and it would have been a good one but I got in a rush, got excited. Okay, right, that was a good one. I want to hit that one really bad, but it's not time. I can hit another one here. Maybe not. I'm gonna swap back now to this side because I see this side is. I have a little better idea of what it looks like, but it's undercut. So that's why I'm battering the edge because it was like dished. You can't you can't drive flakes into a dish. Like here, see how it's dished? Talk about that in many of the other videos. If you try to remove a flake here and drive it into a dish, it's gonna step fracture every single time and it may even snap the point. So you have to batter the dish out of it. 
before you can hit it. So now that we battered the dish out, now I can drive a flake. More, maybe not. There we go. I got one more here, but it's still going to go into this uh, first initial big step fracture thing. Remember, we were going back and forth. Still there. I'm going to have this hit, and it's going to it's going to run into the same valley, and that's okay. There we go. Um, we're just playing a big back and forth game, trying to get new pieces exposed. All right, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna come over here. So study your piece. Luckily, I can I can study pretty fast, so I don't have to have you guys sit around for 10 minutes while I look at it. I can figure out what I want to do. But you may, or you not may, you absolutely do. You want to sit and study your piece like five or 10 minutes, especially when you're just getting started, because you're not gonna come up with the same conclusions that I do in the amount of time. You put 15, 20 years into it, you'll come up with those conclusions really, really fast. Don't be afraid to study your your rock a lot longer than I do. All right, so we're, this got a big, gnarly spot. I don't want to get down into this, but I want to try to get rid of some of that. And it's a, it's like a, a, a piece break waiting to happen because I'm putting a lot of pressure here when I hit. And it's just asking to snap this thing in half. So instead of taking big hits, remember, you see, I talk about that too. And a lot of these talks that I'm not wailing on this thing. If the, if the, uh, the platform is correct and the angle is right, a little pop will take it right off. And if it doesn't, then you change the angle until it does. That's a, another big thing that I see. Luckily, we, we put these together with a, a really heavy duty industrial glue now that's actually heat set, so they're so strong. But I would get guys that say, man, the, the cap came off of my bopper. And luckily we've gotten through that, but it's like the reason is, is because you're actually hitting it way too hard. So if you're trying to spall and you're just wailing and wailing and wailing and wailing on this thing, it would break loose. I mean, with the new glue, we really don't have that problem. I actually haven't had one come back now in I think about a year that somebody hasn't said that it's come loose or maybe only one or two within the last year. It's been, they've been really good. But um, the point is, even if these were held on with a lesser glue, you should never break them because these aren't, you're not beating the rock to death. They're a tool and you let the tool do the work. Only once in a while will you see that I line out and, and really give a good crack, but it's never just constant bashing of rocks, okay? That's not flint napping. That's bashing rocks. So even with this clunky stuff, it's all strategy and it's technique. See, it was a pretty good lick, but I didn't beat the crap out of it. I think if you use your, your wrist and a little bit of elbow, if you're using all elbow, you're doing it wrong. If you're hitting it like this, then it's not, then your platform's not right. And that's when you're gonna get step fractures, you're gonna break pieces in half. It should be mostly wrist with a little elbow, okay? So watch how I go through every one of these hits that I make, and you'll notice that it's very rarely, if I line up for a really specific hit, I may cock back and then do it. So think like fly fishing. When they say you cast, you cast like this, like with your elbow and your wrist, you don't use your shoulder. You should almost never use your shoulder in this. Now, if you're spalling rock and using a big hammer stone, there's going to be some shoulder involved, okay? But when you're just flint napping, there should almost never be shoulder. Clean a little bit more up. Woo. I'd say that was a step fracture waiting to happen, but I just avoided it. Okay, boy, we're getting close. Remember that big clunky piece we started with? Now look at that. Woo, getting nice. <clears throat> All right. Hmm, getting tough. 
getting tough around this funky spot. All right, I'm gonna keep working up a little bit higher. I bet you we're gonna run into another problem and I'll have to solve it later. But as of right now, I just gotta get into this thing. I gotta try to get in there. Oh, I think we're there now. I think I've developed that platform just enough. Ooh, it feels good. Test out these different ones. That's a little aggressive. Maybe a small one. Now that one feels the best. There it is. That was that high spot. That was that spot that I kept going like this. There we go. Could almost, almost get a little arrowhead out of that, but not quite. Ooh, man, she's getting nice now. Getting really nice. Now the fun part's over, because all the clunky stuff's done. Now it's just a dang biface. <clears throat> the fun part's going through all that nonsense. <laughs> and here I was, I was like, I wanted to work this down and get a little projectile. Now we're into a, some beautiful looking piece off that nasty clunky that's a piece of uh, uh, used to used to sell it but I don't have a an option for that now hopefully we get it back but that's a piece of Buffalo River and it's raw just raw Buffalo River nice nice chirp but uh, yeah I don't have the the connection on that I'd like to though because that's that's nice rock to work I do like it. It's not a. It's not quite as good as a. It's like a Texas, like Georgetown, church. Realistically, is hard to beat. But this has got a little bit of bullseye swirls and stuff, and it's kind of pretty stuff. But it's a little tougher to work than say Edwards Plateau chert, like a Georgetown or a Pedernales or something like that. And and guys that maybe are familiar with other charts, I would say that like this raw buffalo rivers kind of similar to like a uh, Wyoming oil chert or tiger chert it's it's a little bit similar it's kind of like a muddy feel to it all right I think we got one. Oh, I hate when they don't just go let's switch spots real quick mmm I want that flake really bad and it doesn't want to go <laughs> All right, so we're gonna skip that and come back on this side. I'll come back to it when I relief it out. That's still the same spot that I was going like this, saying we had that dip in. So we've worked about through all of it. Now I'm just gonna start raising the platform to actually, because we removed flakes off this side, now I gotta raise the platform to remove it back off this side because remember this is that spot that I kept saying it was gonna step fracture when we went in this side and then step fracture this way. So we have that little valley right here. So I want to work this platform up so I can thin both these sides so this is no longer a valley. It's just the middle of the rock. Okay, so that's what I'm kind of up to now. There we go. Now we'll flip it over. There we go. Nice little flake. Don't want to get too ahead of myself. Nice one. It's looking pretty good. I'm going to switch back. Well, I was going to switch back to the other side, but now I changed my mind again. I'm going to work on that tip and work it down. There we go. Very good. Don't get greedy. Very good. Very good. 
Still got one tough spot. That's that one I said before I really wanted that flake and I kept hitting it and saying it and it wouldn't go. That's that same one and it still just doesn't want to dang give it to me. I'm gonna roll crush that. Maybe, maybe not. Alright, I got a little bit of it. There we go. Actually, that's a lie. I think this is the one I kept hitting and saying that it wasn't the one that I that would go. I don't know, it's all starting to look the same now. <laughs> oh, I got it easy that time, so if that was it, then we did the job. So one way or another, remember how I couldn't get, whichever one it was, I couldn't get to go? And I kept saying, hey, I, I really, uh, I just keep hitting it, but it won't go. I was like, let's develop it. You start removing more flakes, and it opens up those releases. And so then when I come back to it, it's an easy release. So that's why I said we just got to leave it. We about got this one licked, don't we? Thinking about that big, big gnarly uh, clunky that we started with. And now we're... <coughs> Now we're down to a pretty nice looking biface, actually bigger than I expected it to be. I'm going to do a little bit of little rascal freehand work right here. That was a good one. Oh baby. Man, I love that thing. See a little rascal. Man, I love that tool. Beautiful little flakes. A little freehand. Every tool in the toolbox has a job. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> it's really taken me years. Like the different flint napping kits that we sell. And obviously the just different ones, they have more tools. Like some of them include this and whatnot. It's like, it's just taken me years to develop not only the different size tools but then how to use them so it's not so much about the tools per se it's just it's like the uh the application of the tool so just having the tool is only half of it figuring out how to really implement it in the build is the other part and of course that's why doing these videos is really really important to me that i teach you how to do it because people get these different tools and they just think it's a progression of you just go from bigger to little you see i don't really once in a while in a video you might see me lap nap uh with a little rascal but it's really really rare this i almost exclusively use as a as a freehand tool and then driving little flakes i mean just really really nice and i don't i can't get that same that same purchase out of the bigger one sometimes out of the medium I'll do it and then other times like today it's like I almost completely skip over that medium I ran that big tool that was working basically what I do is I run a tool until it doesn't work and then I'm like okay that one's not working and then I grab a different tool and I run it until it doesn't work and then I'll grab a smaller tool and I use that so now I still look at this tool and I'm like I've about used the little rascal and I can't even find my other one still. I'm using this. This is like the original prototype. It's got like a little piece of cherry for a stick. <laughs> and I've still had it just so many years. Um, I'm running out of places to kind of use it. And so therefore I'm like I don't want to force myself to use a tool just because it's the next one in line. I might have a little one here. Nope, that was the warning. I got one more out of it there. Maybe one more it's like you have to have a feel for it right and you have to be able to read the rocks see I'm starting to skate off of it it's like that means that that tool is no longer the one I want to use and it's all progression to me so now is when I'm going to start getting into filtering in a little bit of indirect percussion and then also uh, pressure flaking as well 
because we've got ourselves a really nice biface going. I've got a little bit of a turtle back right here and a little bit of a hinge on this side. So you can kind of see a little bit of a hinge, a little bit of a turtle back right there. And, uh, but otherwise we've got a really nice little biface. And so, okay, that's that, <clears throat> that's that turtle back. And as much as I want to go hit on that, it's not going to go. There's a little concavity right there. I'm actually going to indirect off of the opposite side. I talk about that a lot. Other videos too, that when you want to hit. and develop a platform you have to remove from the other side. Ooh, this. This stone feels kind of muddy. That raw Buffalo River. Like I said, it feels like that oil chert or almost, kind of like maybe a Montana porcelainite or a, that oil stone or tiger chert from uh, Wyoming and that bit's not working for me very good right now if that's the tool I want to use but it's kind of not working I'll try the fat side and see if I get anything I'm just going to develop a platform I'm not loving it let's try a little pressure to develop the platform yeah, it's just got a muddy feel to it. So there's different tools have different uh, different feels on the rock, and you can tell if it if it bites or if it skates off. And when your tool starts to skate, like the little rascal did and like that one did, it's not got a lot of bite, and so your tendency is going to be to hit harder. And hitting harder isn't the answer. It's what's going to have the bite that you're looking for and believe it or not i don't usually mix technologies a whole lot but i think we're going to switch to a piece of antler just trying to yeah i try to keep stuff kind of segregated for people to where we've got we're either running antler tools or running copper tools i'm going to come to somewhere other than here i just want to feel how That felt pretty good. That felt really good. All right, we found our tool. All right. Yep, that's the tool. Well, I thought it was the tool. Then we broke the tip off. It's not the end of the world. Maybe got a little aggressive, but yeah, the antlers, antlers really working for me on that. <clears throat> I'm worried we're going to end up hitting that tip a little too hard. I'll try the big side real fast. The big side, you got to really line that platform. And then you got to deliver that hit. So that one worked. That is a, that's almost a shoulder hit. Whenever you find that and use that big side, that's a big hit. It either goes or it doesn't. And at that time it went. That thing's feeling great on there now. That's exactly the bite that I was looking for. There you go. Look at that. Beautiful. Man, that worked out good. Kind of hate to give that up now. I don't like mixing the technologies a lot. It puts me in a different mind space. Because most people don't mix the technologies. I mean, some people do, but honestly... I'm not gonna lie. Most of the time, people that mix the technology—it's kind of a mean thing to say. I don't want to say that. 
I'm gonna say it anyway though. But it's like they're sitting around with a group of people and then they're like, well, I wanna, I wanna abo nap. And so they pull out all their stuff and then as soon as the abo napping gets tough, they grab copper and clean it up real fast. That's typically what I see when you go to nap ins and that kind of stuff. And that's why I'm like, I either shift my mind to abo tools or to copper tools. And I, I typically don't intermingle the two because the techniques to me in the toolage, like I guess there's crossover techniques, right? But the the toolage is so different, I try to keep the two separate. And maybe that's a fault of mine, and maybe to somebody else it doesn't make a difference. But it kind of does to me. Beautiful flake there. But this is one of those scenarios that I mean, the antler tool is just eating this thing alive. Right, now we'll flip back over. I mean, I couldn't get the I couldn't get the little copper bit to bite. Ooh, got it. Got myself. Nope, it was just a stinger. We're all right. But if I'm gonna use, I don't want to use that uh, grinding abrader. I want to use the. Uh, I really thought I got myself just a stinger. Um, I'm going to use a hammer stone if I'm going to abrade with this. Just because I'm more comfortable with it. See, I don't like to necessarily make a piece and then say... Say it was done... Endage if I used a lot of copper on it and I mean I know early people had copper right not in the quantities and not as refined like they weren't going to the store and buying copper caps and filling them with lead and gluing them on sticks it's like so that's different and I understand that that some early people and there's still some lack of evidence on it but think about like the Cahokia mounds they were doing amazing points and then also they had masks and sculptures and all kinds of stuff that they were doing out of copper. So they had copper. And if you look at the really fine work of those points, you can't tell me that they weren't using copper pressure flakers on them. Um, I guarantee and they're like, well, we've never found one. And it's like, well, it's stuff's like gold today. You, did, you had a piece of copper left over. You'd, you'd probably fold it back in, melt it back down, and then and then reuse it but are there copper traces on them i don't know maybe there's not maybe they just weren't using it but they had copper for other things so why wouldn't they have found they were such resourceful people how on earth could they have not discovered the use of copper but then on some rocks again i could see where somebody might have a copper tool and they only use it like if a copper tool is gold let's just say you built that out of a stick and then found a piece of copper and you cold hammered a rod and then you heated it a lot and then you you keep hammering because the harder you hammer copper the harder it gets right so it's opposite of steel so if you heat it up and then let it cool it actually softens copper uh, you're like you quench copper it gets softer as opposed to steel it gets harder and so when you want copper to get harder you hammer it so They'd have figured that out while they're making masks and all that. But imagine just taking a little piece, hammering it into a rod of some sort. It doesn't have to be round, just a stick. And then tying it into either drilling a hole or tying it in, you know, cutting a groove and tying it in. And then using a copper flaker. There's no reason to think that they wouldn't have sorted that out. But there's very little evidence on that. But the benefits of using this is incredible. But you're not going to just be like okay well like today copper wires it, it, sure copper's expensive per se but it's not really you're done with one of these you wear it down you you get through it you're not going to really save this you're just gonna be like well, i'll just spend a few bucks and i'll just buy a new flaker and you'll just throw it in the garbage because you just get tired of it but back then they'd be like oh no that stuff's really important to us and then they would pull it out or unlash it or whatever it is and it might be a little piece left over but still it's like it's like if we were using gold for something it might be a really valuable tool but then 
you don't really waste it. You save it and you melt it back down and you use it for something. And that's probably what they were doing they, when they were casting these masks and that kind of stuff and um, pendants and whatnot out of copper. They probably just melted down all of their napping tools that they, they would have had because they absolutely had the copper. But now I'm not saying paleo people were using copper. I'm not even for sure that woodland were, but I mean, Mississippian people, pretty sure they did. But they would have coveted that. They would have used it, I guess is what I was trying to say. They would have used that a lot more sparingly because they couldn't just roll over to the home improvement store and buy a roll of copper wire. You know what I'm saying? So when they had it, they probably didn't just do the bulk of work. They did a lot of work with antler, which they had a tremendous amount of. And then when they got to a trouble spot, they pull out that little copper cheat stick, pop, 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 catch it back up, and then get back to what they're doing. You wear that copper out, then you're out of it, especially if you're not buying the copper. You bought one of those at a, a yearly, uh, you traded for it or whatever, at a yearly gathering at Cahokia, and it cost you a lot of money. I bet you treated that thing with a tremendous amount of respect. Now today it's almost the opposite, right? It's like the antler is the expensive stuff. The copper's cheap. So we use the copper like it's disposable. Alright. Well, we're getting down to something nice now though, right? We're just gonna batter this into shape. pretty much just battering to shape at this point with a couple a couple bigger flakes mixed in but for the most part not really just mostly we've got her close to the thickness I want to get it a little bit thinner but not much so really I'm just battering to shape with a couple of these little thinning flakes mixed in doesn't want to go come on still again when it doesn't go you don't see me just swinging harder change that angle and try to get a better uh, a better angle or a more precise hit little taps got a funky spot right there we're gonna we're gonna end up with a step fracture in there pretty much no matter what we do because there's a like a fossil pocket or something going on right there yeah but think about that that was that big old clunky piece of rock we started with that is a fine little biface right now almost almost where we want it going to make a nice little projectile point for us. Probably would have had a blade had I not uh, snapped the tip off of it. Really tempted to get back to that dang antler. That uh, medium sized bopper, that three quarter inch bopper, is, uh, that's doing pretty good now. Yeah. Swapping back and forth, instead of trying to do some of these videos, some of these Flit, flit Napping Fridays, trying to do them with uh, all indage tools, and then other ones where we're doing all, uh, all copper tools, just to kind of uh, give a little bit of little bit of something to everybody 
as I know not everybody wants to nap with antler tools because it is it is a bit tougher and then some people look at copper like it's cheating and it's like kind of but kind of not and I mean a, most, a lot of shoot most guys look at like flake over grind and like all those cut and ground preforms they look at that as cheating and I mean I don't really care I don't do any of it because that takes the fun out right that's why I love clunky pieces because I love the the strategy of it and I guess there's a strategy in that too but it's the same strategy it's just over and over and over but that doesn't really do it for me I just love the working of abstract rock but I'll tell you what they make some beautiful pieces when they when they uh, do flake over grind stuff you know those cut and ground preforms it's not for me but it makes some beautiful works of art absolutely but it's I guess to me it's like a, a little too far out of context it, it'd be like shooting uh, be like going and shooting a deer with a a fiberglass bow and a, a doweled wood arrow and a stone point on it like and that's fine you know for most people and I was w would have no problem with that and, and really still don't it's the it's just too far out of context for me at that point so to make like a stone projectile out of something you cut on a saw you know what I mean and then either ground either just napped it from that slab that's cut from a saw or um, then you take that slab and then you actually grind it into the shape of the arrowhead and then you just run flakes up and down it it makes a beautiful point don't get me wrong but it's so far out of context for me personally I can't I can't get excited about it and that's why I don't do it but I mean I don't I don't give a hoot if anybody else does it but at least when using copper tools and whatnot, the mechanics of flint napping are the same for the most part. It's just the, the grip on the on the rock. Whew, man, that antler is on fire right now. It's probably because I've been doing a lot more work with antler here lately too. Come on, don't don't do that. Now it wants to not be on fire. to go platform a little bit better. I'm gonna make a nice projectile here. I'll tell you that much. I'll try a little one right there. That worked. Come on, baby, right there. Here it was. Got it. I'm smelling that antler now. I got that antler <laughs> hitting that thing so hard I could smell the antler burning <laughs> from the friction. That's funny. Ooh, I'm, it's either going to break it or it's going to run a beautiful flake. I'm not going to hit it because it's going to break it. That one's good though. Man, it's starting to turn into a tough piece down at this size. Doesn't want to travel. Ah, oh, I thought I ran it all the way across. I got all cocky. I flipped it over like we're going to flip the point. Man, did I step fracture that bad. That t I thought for sure I ran that all the way over. Oh boy, did I screw that one up. And now we're going to come back. Oh, I bet you that's why. Remember when I said there was this weird fossil pocket? It hit right in the corner of that. Oh, man. Let's hope we can get through it. I don't know if I can. I mean, we'll still make a good killing projectile out of it one way or another if we don't break it. But, man, that's a bummer. I should have saw that one coming. All right. Nope, it hit that same. I got through some of it, but it hit that same weird line. So I'm going to hit this one, and it's going to do the same thing. And I'm going to have to come from the other side to catch back up. But I'm going to do it anyway. It's like if you're going to mess it up, let's mess it up, right? Mm. 
a little piece. Now we actually got a little bit of it from this side, not a lot. But, so here's what we did. You can see that's where it dug in hard, right? Should have went all the way across and we had a beautiful thinning flake. But now because I continued it, I, I really developed that um, ridge step fracture, which is fine because it actually made this whole blade nice and thin. The difference is I have to catch it now from this side and there's not going to be a lot of room for error. So I'm going to chip, chip it down this way to develop that platform. We'll just grind that out with the copper a little faster. And the copper pressure is grabbing on this just fine. I'd say I'd even switch back to the copper indirect stick, but it already kind of proved that it didn't want to bite. And I could be wrong, and it might bite fine now, but up until this last moment, that's been doing a really good job. So I hate to abandon it. You find something that works. It's like, don't fix it if it ain't broke. Mmm, very good. Okay. Alright, let's try that one more time and let's pray we don't break the whole dang piece in half because now I got to thin I got to run thinning flakes to three quarters of the way across this dang thing to try to clean some of that up if it doesn't have to be perfect but you know what I gotta hit that thing so hard I'm gonna try one more I'm gonna try one more on the copper and see if I get a better bite Oh, that wasn't bad. Okay. Maybe it was just through that one section of rock. Maybe it was around that fossil area. Let's try that some more. Mmm, see that's skated. Oh, that was better. Okay. It could have just been me. Oh man, we're running it now. We got her on the run. Maybe it was just me. I don't know. She's biting now. Ooh, be careful. Try one more. That was a beauty. Okay, boy, we're getting close. Getting close to being done. Have us a nice, nice projectile point, I bet, when it's all said and done. Might have that little bit of trash right there in it, but. It certainly kill something. I really need to uh, need to get a couple hunting points made for myself for this little upcoming atlatl hunt that I got scheduled. It's actually a week from today. So I'm filming today. It's a week from today. I'll be there hunting trying to hunt hogs with the atlatl which is tough. But I love it. And I've killed a few of them. Come on. Come on. Give it. But it's about time I get out and do it again. And I need a, just a couple more points. See, now, now it's skating off and I'm not, getting, I'm not getting that result that I was before. And I may end up having to go back to the antler. I'm not going to give up yet though. Because I had a couple of really good licks there with the copper and then it just quit. So maybe my platforms just need to be a little, a little different. Maybe less aggressive because it is a soft stone. Having a really aggressive platform, I think I'm just shearing the platform off is the problem. Where if I don't have... Yeah, see, that was a little bit better. If I if I have a less aggressive platform, like that aggressive, like really defined platform, is great for antler. But I think it's too much for the copper. 
and we're just shearing the platform off. So that's a little bit better. Okay. A little bit more. I don't want to push it too much because at the end of the day, this is a. I'm not really going for the art of flint napping on this one. I'm going for function of it's it's thin enough it's nice enough to throw into an animal and uh, that it's not going to have any major hang-ups need a really good one here though and I did not get it That was a good one, but not in the right place. Man, this thing is just getting me. It's like copper works great one minute. Can't get it to do nothing the next minute. But we're almost there. Almost there. I mean, we're getting down to a really nice, really nice piece. I just need... Just need a little bit more. I right, we'll got a little, a, a small antler tine. I don't think this is the answer. I don't feel good about that one at all. We'll switch back to this big one. This one actually needs ground down. Man, I gotta be aggressive with this thing though, and I don't wanna be. Boy, that did it though. Man, it just ate it. That did it. <clears throat> it's kinda scary doing that, hitting it that hard though at this stage. Snap this baby right in half. Develop that platform up a bit. Come on. Alright, now it doesn't want to work again. Holy smokes. This is a tough piece of rock. There we go. Isn't that funny? They're working great on it now. Isn't that funny how these just different tools just biting different. And it's no real surprise, but got that one more just nasty turtle back spot that just needs to dang come out I'm just hoping it just grabs thank you that was the most of it come on fancy don't fail me now got another little piece pretty close all right we're getting it's not shaped it's shaped more like a dang knife blade but that's not what we, we want a projectile point but uh, we're getting down to the size that we're looking for and I got most of the nasty stuff out I got a little little hinge right there going on and uh, if this thing had some heat on it I bet you it would respond a little bit nicer but it doesn't so this is what we've got so i'm going to strategically grind like the flint nap grind kind of uh this now into the shape that i want it 
and as I'm grinding it, I'm setting up platforms to run like a last little series of flakes up. So I'm not just without with prejudice, you know, just grinding it down. I'm feeling, a, I'm looking and feeling if it's got actual flakes removed. So I might grind and then I might take a flake. So I may grind and then take a flake, take a flake, little flake, little flake, grind, little flakes tip, come back for a flake on here. There we go. And then flip to this side, it's kind of the same thing. It's, if it needs flakes, I'll take flakes. And then if it needs ground, I'll just grind. Right now it all needs flakes right here. In fact, I'm setting up enough platform. Ooh, a little dangerous now at this stage. Needed the little rascal that one right off. We got it though. Well, oh, yeah, we did. Okay, good. Flaky, flaky, grindy, grindy. Mm-hmm. pushing it <laughs> just use that tool and I lost it that's probably a sign that says don't do it again it's exactly what it's telling me don't use it again <clears throat> they gave me one but they wouldn't give me another so if I hit it harder I'm just gonna break it we don't want that uh, now it's kind of the tough part because I'm getting down to about where I want to be on it. Larger atlatl, like archaic style atlatl point. The base is still kind of clunky, but I can't I can't run at it with percussion and probably not even heavy indirect percussion because the shock, given the length of the point and the fact I've already got this little step here, I'll probably snap the dang thing in half. So I have to be patient and basically just nibble it away with the pressure flaker, which I'm not stoked about. And I really shouldn't even hit that, so I should probably just pressure flake till it can't anymore. But it's going, so. And that's a lot safer than smacking on it at the base. Yeah, it's that end shock. You know, you start working that base too heavily. Great opportunity to snap one in half. And some rocks you can get away with it better, but that soft mudstone, I, I have a feeling if I start hitting the back of this thing, we're broke right in half. And I'll end up being real colorful, and you won't like the channel anymore. And that's where we'll be so let's be patient and pressure flake it we can also we can always ice our tendons later right <laughs> Whew, man those are asking to be hit with indirect now though but that antler I'm gonna have to hit it so hard to get that antler to go I'm going to get the end shock. And then if I put the copper on it, I'm worried it's... I might get a good one here or there, but I think it's going to skate. And right now, I'm able to nibble at it with the flaker. So, we'll just nibble a little bit more. The problem is I can't run any big flakes. 
I mean, I'm limited to flakes about that long, so it's hard to really thin that base. It's thinner than it was. Here we go, a little better. better. Come on, give me that one. Give me a long one right there. Mm. All right, we're getting there. It's just patience. Patience and elbow grease. Getting close. Y'all need a progress shot so you can really see what we're looking at? Not too bad. It's got that little, little nasty looking spot there. And then a little bit right there. This side's fine. But we're getting close in to... Uh, you know, something like a bowling style, early archaic. We're gonna uh, make sure we get some good notches in here. Nice at lateral hunting point. And maybe if we're lucky, this will be the one that we take out, and we'd be really lucky just to get just to get a hog in general. It's it's tough hog hunting with an at lateral. But uh, maybe we'll get lucky and this will be the one. See, I don't line them up. Whenever I get spears and I put points on them, I don't go through them all and then pick out my favorite. I literally, all my spears and stuff, I have all confidence in all of it, so I don't have favorites. In the heat of the moment, I just grab a spear and it doesn't matter which one it is to me. So, and even if I did, even if I did do that, I could very well miss with one and it break or who knows what all and I may end up hunting with a different one tell you what that spots a little bit ugly but that's the best part about doing a hunting point right is you can have some of those ugly spots and it's it's plenty streamlined enough there's uh, those ugly spots actually they're not points of friction and on artifacts you see that stuff all the time so that's where i kind of look at it going i really just don't care i'm gonna hunt with this one without a doubt and the fact that we got it out of that big old clunky piece of this raw buffalo river that's that's nice within itself that was a lot of fun working through that big clunky rock. Cats are fighting outside, if you hear them. All right, so we'll take a pressure flaker. We'll start notching the back here a little bit. Since I'm not trying to make like this super beautiful thin notched piece, I, Really, I want it to look more like a, a complete indige build, but at this point, we've used so much copper on it that well, there's no sense in driving with copper the most of the way and then, you know, putting it in the old driveway with antler tools, you know what I'm saying? So, it's just a process. We'll just chip it out. Notch it, sharpen it, just get the job done. Ooh. 
That's some good pressure right there. Holy smokes. Minus the couple copper smears on this thing. thing absolutely going to look going to look like it's 9,000 years old. I'll tell you that much. Not not very well executed for glory of artistic value but guarantee I put this thing on the end of one of my big spears and hit a hog in the ribs with it the hog gonna have a really bad day and I'm gonna have a really good day and then the family is gonna get to eat nice on some more fresh wild pork Yeah, you guys won't be able to go to the uh, the collectors like section on Hunt Primitive and buy this one because I'm I'm gonna put it on a spear, <laughs> and a week from today it's gonna be out in the woods hunting. So now we'll clean that base up just a little bit more. That's getting there, huh? Good, good size for hog hunting. Just a maybe a skosh on the big side, but not not really. Especially by the time I refine the edge out just a little bit, we're gonna run more of a like a single bevel technique on it. Not maybe a pure single bevel, but. This style of point lends itself very well to single bevel sh sharpening just because the the edge lasts a little bit longer when you do that do it that way instead of instead of taking it off two sides you're removing twice as much rock so you get a lot more sharpening cycles out of a, a single bevel point but also like a, a, a little bit softer stone like this it uh, it's actually a little bit more beneficial to have a little more robust edge because it's really tough to get like a razor sharp edge like on a heat treated rock or a really 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 high silica raw chert that's super slick if you have something that feels a little bit more muddy like this does those little fine serrations are almost impossible to make and then whenever you do they chip off so that's why we use like really hard hard stones for um, for those little scary sharp serrations that we do on arrow points and whatnot. And then muddy stones like this, it's a lot more advantageous to do a little bit more inconspicuous kind of serrations. Not not really pronounced. Just try to get a, a nice clean click. Kind of like we would sharpen a Clovis, but a little bit more direct for serrations. That's pretty decent. It's a, I mean, it's sharp. Don't get me wrong. I, mean, I have no problem hunting with that. It's sharp, but it's a little, it's a little different type of sharp than those really hard, you know, heat treated coral or something like obsidian. It's a it's hard but brittle, you know what I mean? So like this isn't super brittle. It's muddy and a little soft, but it can still be sharp. I think I just need to sharpen the tip up on this one a little bit more because it is a little bit softer of a stone. I think we're a little bit too blunted on the tip for the type of stone we're working. The edges are getting pretty sharp. just want to clean that tip geometry up a little bit because I, I don't love this softer stone with a, a dollar tip. I think it kind of needs that. And I think it can also, because it's not as brittle, you see the hits, the hits it takes from the antler. 
I don't think it's going to be as prone to snapping that tip as a really hard stone. So I think we can actually get away with a little bit sharper tip geometry. Boy, we're almost there. Very close. And then if I, uh, some good luck, I take this one out and it happens to find its way into a hog owl. I'll have to let y'all, boy, that's, that's getting nasty sharp now. That's good. A little bigger serrations. But if it finds its way into a hog, I'm sure y'all will hear about it. Because I'll, I'll post it in another Flint Napping Friday that, hey, remember that one that we made previously? That's what we're shooting for right there. That's not too bad. Feel good about the tip? I wouldn't want to catch it, that's for sure. Mm. Nope, I would not want to catch that one. What we're going to do on the tip on this one, I've showed before, rather than flake the tip, we're actually going to, because it's that a little softer and I want to put a little bit more of a needle tip I'm actually going to use the side of the flaker to grind the tip so I'm almost grinding the tip into shape because it's softer and I want to make sure it's really hard it, it doesn't need to be sharp necessarily like on the edges of the tip because it's sharp up here right but that first initial, in fact, it's so it's so grabby right here. I'm going to come up, I'm going to come up a little bit, and I'm actually going to narrow those serrations. The back serrations are going to cut cut uh, vital organs really, really well. The tip of this thing probably shouldn't have any more drag on it, so than it needs to be because it's not a super hard and thin napped point, and so. I'm going to show you what I'm doing here. It's just like an intuitive feel on the rock. I want that tip to be solid and I want it to be more sharp. So there you go, look at that. Okay. See if you can even put my hand up. Maybe you can see it. So it's a little more dull. Like it's not got the sharp serrations. It's not. It's not dulled. So it's not crushed. But you see how it's got a little bit more of a needle tip here, and then it gets in. Well, the serrations don't start until here. So this way, it's already sort of busted through the skin before it starts actually cutting. If that makes sense. So I think, I think we're feeling pretty good about that. I'll run with that. Good. That little size spear point made out of raw, clunky Buffalo River that probably should never have been a point, but we got it sorted out. So, hey, thanks for following along, guys. Uh, hope to see you on the next Flint Napping Friday. And if the hunt goes good, I'm sure y'all will, uh, will be the first to hear.